Welcome to the Inner Market Analysis Update. This is being prepared Sunday, September 11th, and this will apply to Monday, September 12th, where we look at the different markets, the different indexes, and how they interact with each other to see if that can give us any insight as to how things may ultimately go for stocks in general and the S&P 500 in particular. So this is being prepared for Monday, September 12th. The first thing that I like to go through is just the current valuation. Now, this is long term. So this the, these charts don't change all that much. In fact, this first chart, it goes back a long time, but it shows on a trailing 12 month basis. When we look back, the market is continuing to be overpriced right now. When we get to 20 or above, that means the market is expensive. When we come down to the blue line, it's fairly priced. When we get down to the green line, it's considered inexpensive or cheap. And you can see that this can go on for years and years right here. So this isn't necessarily something that you need to act upon right now. I just like to keep an eye on this. We are seeing earnings being revised downward, kind of as a general trend. And that will ultimately come through and ref reflect stock prices. But it hasn't had that big of an impact, at least yet. But that could change in the very near future. This is also a historical chart going back to 1980, just to show how the valuation levels were as we went through different events. The possible positive scenarios, I'm not gonna go through those in this video, <coughs> excuse me, because they're kind of in the middle right now. The, the daily charts and the weekly charts are suggesting that the market's really kind of on the edge of a knife right now. It could tip in either direction. We have some major economic reports coming out this week, CPI, PPI, retail sales, consumer sentiment, and the market's going to get a lot better look at what's going on and what kind of a scenario should be adopted. And we're kind of in the middle right now with these. So I'm not going to go through those charts currently, but I do go over them in the daily video updates, the full length version. So growth versus value, so growth advance this past week. We also saw value advance. When you compare the two, we're seeing growth showing some improvement, but still in a downtrend with value weakening a bit, but still in an overall uptrend. Here's another look by looking at indexes where we're seeing a little bit of a bounce with growth, but still in a downtrend. Here's an inverse value still in an uptrend, but showing some weakness. Then using ETFs to look at the same thing, because sometimes we get a little different insight, not necessarily right now though. We're seeing growth just tick up slightly with this. And then this is the inverse showing how value has been up, but recently has shown a little bit of weakness. Then looking at the growth index versus the value index, the growth actually started to turn back up, but still in an overall uptrend. I know it's a lot of the charts that are looking at the same basic thing, I like to do that in many cases just to get different perspectives on things. Looking at some other markets, the 30 biggest software companies saw a little bit of a bounce. This is a daily chart, but we're still in an overall downtrend. Inflation has kind of gone sideways currently on this monthly chart where the CRB, and I'll have another chart to show you later, the, the daily chart. We're still in an overall uptrend, but seeing some recent weakness. And here's the Baltic Dry Index. It had really been falling as we were seeing weaker economic reports coming out. Well, it bounced up a little bit in Friday's session. Here's the CRB daily chart where we've come down to the 200-day moving average, even though we're still in an overall uptrend. But we've been below the 50-period moving average for quite a while now. And if this continues, we might see a death cross in the not-so-distant future. Looking at some other inflationary areas, corn, saw a little bit of a bounce here. Aluminum, bounced up just a little bit. Heating oil still remains a lot higher than it had been. Where gas has really been coming down, which is kind of political, because this is the one that people feel the most. They can keep gas prices down. That tends to keep people happier. It's still very high, but at least lower than it was. Natural gas still continues to be pretty elevated. Oil, after falling down into the low 80s, is actually bounced back up to 86.79. Wheat bounced back up a little bit. 
Lumber also seeing a bit of a bounce previously. Then even though we were in this downtrend overall, it's been bouncing back. The dollar, which saw some weakness later on in the week, is still in an overall just monster uptrend when you compare it with the Japanese yen and the euro. There is a chart comparing just that right now where the euro has really been declining. The dollar has really been advancing. Here's the Japanese yen, which has seen a lot of weakness, and the euro with weakness, and the dollar has been advancing. Again, it's not that the dollar is anything magical. It may have its day of going in the toilet. It's just when you compare it to the yen and the euro right now, the dollar seems to be the best alternative. Copper bounced up slightly overall. And then this is a chart that came out a few days ago on Isabel Net where we're showing real complacency when we're at the bottom and then we've been coming back up. We're still kind of about in the middle currently. When we really take notice of this is when the gold to copper ratio really spikes. That means the gold is really outperforming copper and it just shows that there's a lot of fear. Well, gold is just not doing much these days. Copper's holding up better, so we're just not seeing a real advance in this ratio. In fact, here is the copper to gold ratio showing that copper is outperforming gold. And here's a longer term look at that same chart and also shows us the spread between the two year yield and the copper to gold ratio. And these are quite far apart from each other. We keep waiting to see if something will happen to bring these lines closer back to each other. Gold was up half a percent on Friday, but still has really been in an overall downtrend lately. No matter what the people out there that just love gold, and can seem to justify anything gold does. I haven't listened to anybody yet, but they'll probably say, yeah, gold wasn't really up, but look at this base here. And look at, we're, we're hitting a double bottom right here. Now, it may be what happens. And I may sound foolish for saying that, but it seems like no matter what's happening in gold, these folks find something to be all cheery about, even when it's going in an overall downtrend. And silver, also saw a little bit of a rebound, but we're in an overall downtrend. Looking at some index ratios, this is the CRB index, which is still in an uptrend compared to the S&P, showing some weakness. And if this continues, we might see a death cross. Then the inverse of this is showing how the S&P is trying to bounce back, showed some weakness, and is now, at least as of Friday session, trying to recover a bit. This shows how the NASDAQ 100 has really been underperforming the S&P 500, but it did turn up. And this is the big growth area. If we're going to see the indexes really shoot up from here, we want to see the NDX do a lot better. That's the NASDAQ 100. Looking at some other stocks, the mega cap growth. These are the real big monster stocks out there. Apple, Google, you know the big boys. It was up over 2%. On the week, the S&P 100 to the S&P 500 bounced slightly. The S&P 100 tends to be more growth, where the rest of the S&P is growth and value. Small caps, this is a little bit concerning. It was up slightly in Friday's session, but it's really underperforming on a ratio basis. The low volatility stocks were up as well. We've been kind of going above and below. We had a recent death cross, then we went above. We're kind of right about in the middle now. Are we going to see a death cross with this chart? And this is the ratio between the low volatility stocks and the S&P, where they're still in an overall uptrend, even though they've been showing some recent weakness. The Dow transports and utilities taken together as the Dow Jones composite average, it broke back above this 50 period moving average. And that could be taken as positive, even though we're still in an overall downtrend. Here's Dow theory showing how Dow advanced on Friday, the last few days, actually transports and utilities as well. And this is just a longer term look where we not really seeing any real divergences. I, I'm seeing a little bit of a divergence here with utilities and that's why I'm diving more into this. And I have another chart later to show you. I keep saying it's in the weekly video, but no, it's in the intermarket analysis video. Fang stocks came right back up to the 50 period moving average, but still in an overall downtrend. And one thing you could say, the 50 is actually advancing. ARC also having a lot of trouble, but did bounce back, trying to come back up to its 50 period moving average, but still in an overall downtrend. 
Bonds have not really been all that helpful lately. They're starting to really come down with the overall ETF. And we broke through the COVID low with the World Bond Index. Stocks have been really outperforming bonds on a monthly basis. And bonds have been really underperforming stocks on a daily basis. The stock to bond correlation, it's still pretty strong, but could be starting to roll over. When we get high readings on this chart, that means they're going in the same direction, bond prices and stocks. When it gets way down here, that means they're going in opposite directions of each other. And I have a lot of correlation charts to show you. The corporate bond index ticked up a little bit recently, but is still in a downtrend. Looking at the S&P 500 to the 10 year, kind of flat, but bouncing up slightly. This is interest rates against the S&P 500. Junk bonds saw a little bit of a bounce. They tend to follow the stock market overall, but they're still in a downtrend. When you look at the ratio between junk bonds and treasuries, junk bonds are really outperforming. And that's why you have a lot of folks getting into these, even though they're riskier, they do potentially give a chance at a better return. Here are the yields as they've been going back up and bond prices have been going down. This is a weekly chart looking internationally where US, UK, and Germany have all been raising interest rates. Japan, they've been keeping their interest rates rather flat. Looking at some sectors, this is the new chart. And I'm going to pause and talk about this just a little bit, where some folks use the utilities to the S&P ratio. I switched it around because it matches up more with what the, it, it's upside down if you, if you don't do it that way. So what we're watching for here is this chart sometimes can be pretty good. When it bottoms out and starts to go up, a lot of times that's a bottom in the S&P. At the same time, when this tends to top out and go down, this often marks either a short to intermediate and sometimes even long term top in the S&P 500. And we've been seeing for most of 2022 how the S&P has been really underperforming utilities. Well, they're still underperforming. Are they going to come down and possibly hit some kind of support or... Is there a trend line in here that they're going to bounce off of? We did turn up slightly in Friday's session. So we want to be watching this on a daily basis to see if it starts to go up. That could really give some support to stocks. And I may add this as one of the possible positive scenarios if this chart is still telling us some things. But a lot of our other charts help us to find bottoms. This one is a little more helpful in that it can also help us find tops. Staple sector also just about on the moving averages, and we're seeing a potential golden cross there. Energy to the S&P, still energy is really outperforming, even though it's shown some recent weakness. The tech sector, still in a downtrend, but is turning back up right now. Semis also downtrend, but showing some improvement. Technology to the S&P, still really tending to underperform and is in a downtrend. Looking at growth against bonds, they both have really suffered in 2022, but growth is now starting to outperform bonds overall. That basically just means this chart is saying growth stocks would have outperformed bonds, at least right now. Then looking at the 10-year yield to the tech sector where interest rates have really been going up. So they've been in an uptrend and they're still in an uptrend, but showing some a recent pullback. Here, this is an inverse of that, showing how the tech sector really underperformed, but bounced up slightly in Friday's session. Discretionary, the things that make life fun, that's kind of been sneaking up and actually in showing some improvements overall when you compare them to staples, even though they're still in an overall downtrend. And then you look at staples, the things that you have to have, that is still in an overall uptrend, but is showing some weakness. Energy to the tech sector, energy's just been doing really well, then it fell back, now it continues to outperform tech, but we're seeing some potential that tech could be showing some improvement. Gold, which just continues to underperform, it's really underperforming the S&P 500. We saw a nice golden cross here and it looked like gold was starting to break out. Well, now we're seeing a death cross as gold 
still really struggles. Gold is also struggling against the US dollar. The dollar has been going up as gold has mostly been going down. That's why you're seeing this ratio really decline. High leverage loans. These are risky loans showing a little bit of an improvement. If the economy was getting ready to fall apart and people couldn't make their payments on these loans, that would bleed through to the earnings of these companies and we would really see this decline. Well, we're not really seeing that, even though it's still in a downtrend right now. Here's our inner market analysis chart showing how oil is still doing the best, going back to the beginning of the year, followed by the dollar. Gold stocks and bonds continue to be negative. Looking at some indexes, this is a broad-based measure of a five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows. This is still negative overall. And this is one of the warning signs I'm seeing on the daily charts is we're seeing a bit of a breakout. We held up supports in the S&P, but we're not seeing a breakout in highs, new highs right now. And that's a little bit concerning. Now that could change if we get into areas that we haven't been in for a while and stocks really start to go up from here. But that's just a, a warning flag right now that I'm seeing. Small cap index showing a nice bounce after coming down to S1, but still below the 50 period moving average. The mid caps, this is where we're kind of getting the strength from. It was the best performing index for the week. We set a low here at S1, came up, broke through the 50 period moving average, but now we're right at resistance or a potential tipping point right on this pivot. We go above this pivot, that's positive. We stay below it, that's negative. And that's kind of where the market's at right now because it doesn't know where to go. The Dow also right at its 50 period moving average after showing a kind of a nice rebound, but we still have resistance above where we're at. The NASDAQ broke above its 50 period, but still has some overhead resistance. Just want to make sure the charts got mixed up here. NASDAQ 100 is right on its 50 period moving average. Wilshire coming up to the pivot level after getting above its 50 period moving average. See how the, the market's kind of poising itself? It knows there's a big week coming up and it just wants to be ready to go in either direction right now. Looking at all stocks came right up to the 50 period moving average, even though we're in an overall downtrend. Emerging markets not really helping us, even though they were up one and a half percent on Friday, but not really trying to improve on that downtrend that they've been in. China has been going up where emerging markets, Europe, Japan, and the S&P still continue in longer term downtrends. Looking at some correlations, we're still seeing a pretty strong correlation between the S&P going one way and the dollar going in the opposite direction. However, with oil, they were starting to go in the same direction, but now it's working its way down and could go into a neutral territory where we're not really getting much information. Here is, this is pretty much back in a neutral when you're looking at the 10 year yield and the S&P. They had been going in opposite directions, but now it's coming back into a neutral reading where the tech to the 10 year yield, they still are in a pretty strong inverse relationship right now. And the S&P to the two year, that is at neutral right now. So it could go either way. So what are the things that are positive? Man, it's been a long time. The only thing I change on here is the date because none of these have changed pretty much for all of 2022. Energy, the CRB index and interest rates still continue in overall uptrends. And then we have this whole list of negative things that have really been suffering. They're showing improvement. And some of them could eventually turn positive, but they just haven't turned positive as of right now. So thank you. I hope you find this useful. Please feel free to check out the daily videos. And I also do a daily brief where I just go over the highlights. There's also the weekly video that you can look at. And I will prepare the next intermarket analysis video next weekend.